Oh, there you go. No way. It's me. Yeah. She's back. Tell you what, if you flip Hi, it guys. sideways, flip it sideways, you flip it sideways, where's your phone? No, not there you go. Now it's see you clearer. Oh, okay, there you go. Right. Do I look any different? No, exactly the same. Yeah, I know. Still that post to go. Oh, you. So do you. Mind you, I keep seeing you on Facebook, so you don't look any different. Oh, yeah. But I see you all the time, but you've always got a glass of wine in your hand. Where you with friends. Somewhere nice. Oh, I know. My travel in the last few years has been extraordinary. Good for you. Well, you yeah, are. very nice. You are, you are in the middle of Australia, you know? Yeah. It's a nice little honour you got there. Did you ever come out here? Never been to Australia. Always. Yeah, that's... Been. So wrong, so naughty. I know, I'll, I'll get there one day. Yeah. What else is up, Fitzy? I mean, I haven't talked to you um, 10 years. I think Hong no, Kong was the last time I saw you. Hong Kong was the last time I saw you. That was oh, only. shit, really? Wow. Yeah, that's the night, because we've moved out, but not fully. But I live in the country now. And it's about an hour and a half well, from here, two hours maybe, north. So we've got bloody horses and two dogs and... um. Goats. No way. Goats? Bees. Soon to have probably chickens. Yeah, no, we're going real rural. It's great. So it's all your farmer fitzy now, right? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm loving it though. It's been really good. But I'm still like involved in squash with like World Squash and my local association out here. And I just haven't been on court hitting a ball much lately. You work with any involved quite a bit in... Um the building of courts kind of resurrecting the Australian squash. Um, yeah. Right? Yeah. So we got involved about six, seven years ago and, and it was hilarious because I didn't know a thing about Facebook or any of those. And then I had to suddenly learn and, um, and that's how we just built it up is having people know that there was someone there who could build courts and, and renovate them and stuff. So, yeah, we've been doing that for about six, seven years. It's taken us all over Australia and some of Oceania, and it's, it's been good. Oh, good. Hey, rebuilding the game right from scratch. Well, sort of. It feels a little bit that way because it was just building, having people get a little bit of trust again, a little bit of faith. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, because whenever you just get your old plaster courts bogged and patched by the local builder and it falls out six months later, people don't trust, yeah. you know, there's a whole lot of ill will and mistrust in the whole thing. And and then, I don't know, call it good timing. We were just there with the right timing and then the product and 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 actually turning up to do the job. You know, if, if I said it will be there Monday, we were there Monday. So it was that type of thing. Yeah, because wasn't one of the big, wasn't the World Juniors in Australia this year? The schedule? Yeah, it got cancelled. Yeah. 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 It, um, July on the Gold Coast, yeah, and it got cancelled. So now World Squash are trying to resurrect that and have it whichever country we can, um, either end of the year or early next year. Yeah. So that's, um, yeah, so that was meant to be Australia and uh, I think that's the only real major thing that we've cancelled other than our local tournaments, but no. Yeah. Yeah. But that was all Queensland, not, not here. I was thinking the other day, it was um, when I first met you, and I couldn't remember the club it was at. It was an under-23 tournament in the south of England. Hmm. Marsh was playing. You were there. Yeah. I, played, I played in like a, like a, like, it was like a feeder event. I played against Peter Nichol and Puerce. And but that was going on alongside your under-23 event. I just could not remember the club it was at. Um, Sussex was it Sussex somewhere. Well, that's what I'm going with. There was I remember an under twenty three thing. It was like an invitational. Was Dan Jensen there? Um, no, uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, so I'm picturing another one. But yeah, look, uh, my my home base was Reading, but um, yeah, I remember that. I would have played. I would have played different stuff around. Um, Surrey and Sussex and whatever. Yeah, it was probably, my main area was Berkshire and um, Buckinghamshire and that sort of thing. Yeah, it was like ninety-one, I think. Oh right. Yeah. Um, you're early. You're you're very young. Ha, I would have been. I would have been like nineteen twenty, I think. 
baby. Gosh. Mind you, I'll never forget Texas. <laughs> I will never forget that, Texas. That's a good story, that one. I will never forget that. That was, <laughs> oh, the, the thought of breaking down at 5.30 in the morning in the middle of nowhere. It was, even, it was like, it was two in the morning because yeah. we had our racket bags in the back of the pickup. And both looked at each other and go, oh, it looks like we're sleeping here on the side of the road and put the racket legs in. And I remember you waking up the next morning and going, let's go for breakfast. And we go into this place. Oh, I had place. to have grits, man. <laughs> you walked into this place and everybody had a white beater on, had no teeth and tattoos. And you looked at me and go, this is like being in a movie. This is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, it. I know. I know. Cause, and you're just going, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. I'm going... This is great. I've got stories to tell now. This is oh. so funny. Yeah, then I, know, I can remember there was one guy, as you say, in a, in a wife beater, and he had on the really big, not, not the Stetson thing they wear, the, just the big um, baseball cap. Yeah. And as you say, like no teeth, and I think there was long hair and a couple of tats, and I'm like, <laughs> and the jeans and the boots, I'm going, this is what I wanted to see. I want some grits and whatever else you meant to eat down here. Yeah, oh, it was crazy. hilarious. It was hilarious, and then you got in the car and you went off to Vegas and won the tournament. Off to Vegas, did I? Yeah, you yeah. went to Vegas. I dropped you off at the airport, and you went to Vegas, and I think it was a small tournament. And I think you sent me a message afterwards. Oh, thanks, thanks for preparation, but I won. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no sleep, eating grits. Pro oh. oh, probably drank too much, but anyway. But you didn't get your picture of the Texas, you know, coming through the border. That's what you wanted. That's what the big deal was. That's right. Oklahoma and Texas. Yeah, yeah. I've still got them somewhere in my photo album. No, I'm yeah. sure. You used to take photos all the time. Actually, you, you, oh, I love you, it. you're the one person on the tour that always reminded me, like, wherever you go, you've got to see whatever you can do because you might never, ever come back here again. It's true. Because we yeah. went to the Cowboy Hall. Well, I don't know how many times I've gone somewhere and I'm like, oh, I've got to come back here. And you just, you just kind of don't. You know, for whatever reason, you don't get back. Can't. Tournament's not there anymore or something. So, absolutely. You've got to eat and do whatever the locals do and see whatever you can see. That's true. Um, going back to your squash days, which were a few years ago now, because you've been retired for, what, 10 years? I've been retired since 2003. <gasps> That's 17 years. Really? That long? You've not retired that it long? Is 17 <laughs> years. Yeah. Yeah, Sorry. 17 years. I, I sort of messed around. After retiring in 2003, I just took a little break. But then I kept playing league and, and fun tournaments that I hadn't been to before, like um, the Dubai Threes. And I went off to Alaska. And I think there was something else I did. So I just did a whole lot of fun stuff. and that. That just sort of really kept me interested. And it finally got to about 2005 or six or so. And I was like, okay, I'm ready to slow down more now. Slow down. Wow. Yeah. What, was, what, was, what was the highlight of your career, you think? Um, oh, where do I start? Um, Big career. Yeah, well, there's, it's funny. All the majors were such massive high points. Um, so winning my first British, obviously, um, just because it was the first and it was such a bloody nemesis tournament for me. I, I sort of, something would always happen every year. Someone played better than me. I played crap. I got an injury or whatever happened. Um, so winning the first one of them, obviously winning my first Worlds because just that, the first. But it was like everything's got a, a bit of a highlight. So the five Worlds all had something so important about them. Um, the two British mm -hmm. uh, Commonwealth Games, that was huge. That was such a relief. The, the one it in was Manchester? such a build-up. Hey? One in Manchester? Yeah, the Manchester 2002. It was um, such a relief to win that because in Australia there'd been publicity and, you know, I'm just a little old squash player. I wasn't used to it. But, you know, in Australia it was all the swimmers would win gold and, this athlete would win gold and Australia was just naming all the golds they fully expected to win. And I was suddenly on that list. And so it was like this huge pressure. I had media coming up to me. Normally as a squash player, you've got to go to the media, you know, 
that sort of thing. Like they want you to drive all the way to the radio station for a 10 minute interview and things like that. But they were all coming to me. So it was um, such an um, unbelievable feeling. So when I won, it was just oh, pure relief. I was exhausted mentally and emotionally. I'm going to take you back to that day because I remember it clear as day. I watched that final. I was there with a group of kids here from the States and you won the final and you finished and there was a side call. And after the final, you went on there and did a ghosting session. Because <laughs> I dragged one of my girls over to watch and said, this is what it takes to be the best in the world. This is how you win gold medals. And yeah. she you just yeah. won the match and she's doing a ghosting session. I'm like, yep, that's a bit yeah. too good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. No, the one thing, and I, I don't mean this to maybe come out the wrong way or anything, but when you were training, you're doing like a good hour on court in the morning, you know, you're just doing technical work and whatever. Then in the afternoon, you're having some pretty hard sessions like, um, you might be doing, yeah, you, oh yeah, sorry, my, my battery sign came on. Um, so in the evening I was doing, you know, the afternoon I'd be doing a hard training session and weights and and ghosting and whatever. So when I went to a tournament, and, and this is not met in any disrespect, but if I was winning my matches in 27 minutes, mm -hmm. my body was so used to doing all the hard work five, six days a week. So hence why if I got through my match fairly comfortably, I was just trying to keep my, my speed and my level up and make it feel like I burnt the right amount of energy in preparation for the next day type thing. So that's why, and that, and I think so that ghosting always used to just make me feel good mentally as well, that yeah. I was, I was feeling fast and fit and ready. So that's why I was doing it. Yeah. I think obviously it's been known as well that you were probably one of the best ambassadors for the game during that era. And do you think that, you passed on that torch to Nick Matthew because it kind of seems like you did. Like you're just such a good like ambassador, role model for young kids and promote the game. And I feel like Nick took it over when you retired. And I think that's mainly because he, he was around you quite a lot. I think you learned from that. Yeah. Yeah. So my um, other half at the time ended up managing Nick for a bit and we were both Dunlop players and, and look, we probably all learned something from one another, but, the one thing I know is I grew up um, very much being told and, re and reminded that I chose to play squash and this is how I'm, I'm making my living. And basically I'm an entertainer. So yeah. you've got to put in your best effort. Now, if someone wants to sponsor you or people pay tickets to come and watch squash, your job is to entertain and justify the money you've just earned. Yeah. So it's put on a show, it's be the ambassador, give back to your sport. And, it, you know, playing squash for a living is a pretty amazing thing rather than being stuck at a desk nine to five or whatever. Mm -hmm. So we're doing some pretty special stuff. So, um, you know, and there's lots of people out there playing squash who want to be better at it. But, you know, we're fortunate enough to have the skills or the mental capacity and, and put in the effort to to take it to a high level. So it's your job. You gotta, you gotta give back and do the best that you can. And I, I love being around squash people. I just, I love talking squash. It doesn't matter when, where and how. And um, everyone in my life is squash connected, so. Yeah, yeah, same here. So do you watch the, do you, do you currently watch the game today? I do, do when I can. Um, so I see bits and pieces, you know. Um, I watch a bit of the, um, the PSA TV and you know I got to work with Joey Barrington so I love listening to Joey and the boys have some banter and um, so I watch it when I can and you know for me it's always fun to see especially it, it's changed now but say five years ago I was you know still watching Nicole David and I remember playing her when she was just a young girl so it was good to see the people I used to be able to play and beat then they've come up and taken over the mantle. And, you know, Nicole is retired now, so there's a new crop of girls. And it's yeah. always just fun to see um, the new girls, how they play, how the game's changing, how the clothing's changing, some of the countries they're travelling to. And it's just fun to see um, the next generation. And, you know, from when you and I played, even the rules are changing. So 
yeah. it's just fun to see how everything is exactly that changing around you the whole time it's it's i don't know improving getting faster tv everything about it yeah i think the speed of the game has totally changed um it's, you know, it's a lot more a lot more shot play uh, yeah. than when it was back then more it was more attritional back in that day just working yep. that ball up and down the wall um who would you say in your mind was the most influential person helped you along the way in your journey to becoming to becoming the best see once again it's not a straightforward answer um my early days and and this is the thing i i got i give credit to all of them because they all contributed something to to my game obviously my mum she taught me first uh so um you know just time and effort driving me around actually teaching me technique and teaching me how to love the game there was a fellow called Bruce Alexander, who's an Aussie, um, who's Zach Alexander's father. Okay. Uh, then it was AIS days. It was uh, Jeff Hunt, Heather Mackay. I went to England. It was Mike Johnson. Mm -hmm. um, he was my coach there for a number of years, and he coached so many of the Aussies. Um, he was just fantastic. His, his motivation never waned, never waned. Um, then... When I got a bit stale, made a decision to go visit Jonah Barrington, and he certainly, um, oh, he was great. He just got my motivation going again. Such a wonderful, wonderful man. And then I spent a little bit of time just picking up different bits and pieces from people like Mike Way, who was coach to Jonathan Power, um, Malcolm Wilstrop. Yep. Um, Back home in Australia, there was Roger Flynn at the Victorian Institute of Sport. So there's little bits from everyone that I can contribute um, or that I can say contributed. And there was also a sports psychologist called Ken Way, so Mike Way's brother. And they all contributed something to help me get to where I got to in the end. I mean, a lot of it is internal within. They just help bring it out. Yeah. I mean, that's a strong list of coaching that you picked pick the brains from everybody so that's yeah. good and by my mum they're all men <laughs> <laughs> uh, so what's your role with will squash these days uh i'm vice president yeah. and uh i've been doing that for what is that two and a half years um so yeah it's been been interesting being part of the world squash and it's it's fun again because I, I know so many of the people and I've met all sorts of people along the way but you know it's it's always interesting to see how different countries and cultures have their squash programs and then communicating with everyone um, and obviously we're now you know looking to do what we can for squash on a worldwide scale we deal with the PSA um, we deal with the regions and then obviously we communicate with all the individual countries and um, yeah, I enjoy being a part of that. And for me, it's a great opportunity to obviously keep in touch with everyone I know. But it's, once again, it's giving back to the sport I love. Yeah. You're still, still a busy little bee. You've always been that way. You always like to be involved and like, yeah, hear, oh, you show up here and you show up there. It's always, it's always good to see. I always like to yeah. hear you're doing well as well. Yeah, well, I think, and I, I have no other explanation for it other than, I just love the sport and being part of it. It's just in my blood. So, you know, every day I speak squash to someone. Um, I, I just, yeah, I, I have no other words for it other than the sport is just within my blood. So truly passionate about it. All right. Well, I'm going to sign off and say thank you so much for letting me interview you for Squash Flick TV. It was great catching up. Oh, my gosh. It's been Oh, it's been too long. 17 years we just worked out. Yeah, just worked that out, yeah. Yeah. Great to talk Oh, no, hang on. No, that's not okay. true. It was Hong Kong. Hong so, Kong. Right? Hong Kong. Yeah. Hong Kong, yes. okay. Beg your pardon. Yeah. All right, well, great to speak to you. Thoroughly enjoyed it, as always. Appreciate your time. Good catching up, Fitzy. And you. Great to see you. Yeah.